All right, guys, this is how you remove the fuel pump for your 04 WRX. You got your two bolts down here. You're gonna take a 12 millimeter and loosen those up. And then we're gonna take the seat out. All right, after you take those bolts out, you're gonna pick up on your seat. Just gonna give her a little tug. Slide out. Now we're gonna get over here to the fuel pump. Alright guys, next I'm going to take my back seat out because the fuel pump's actually in the trunk, but it's really close back here to the back seat, and I'm kind of a big guy. So to reach in there and get to this, it's a lot easier to take the seat out, so I can just work on it right here from the back. And to do that, you're going to take these three bolts out. There's another one right over there. And this other one right here we're gonna take these out and that again is another 12 mil pretty easy to take out all this can be with real simple hand tools all right next I mean I'm only like five minutes into this but you're gonna have some little push clips around here and this little guy right here actually goes in through the back of the trunk where you can reach around right here and get it. And that so that you can take this out and get to these four Phillips on the top of the fuel pump cover. So I'm going to finish taking these Phillips out real quick. As you can see them Phillips right there. And then we're going to get to the fuel pump. Alrighty then. So I got the cover off there. And now we're going to take these clips off for the plug. Switch hands here. Alright, probably have to pause it and do that. And then right here, fuel line going up, pressure side. And then returns and probably an overflow. Let's see if I can focus on that in there. Alright, once I get those off, we gotta take these out right here to lift this up to get to the fuel pump. All right guys, this is what it looks like when it's coming out. Uh, I got the float in my hand. Oh, I'm pouring fuel everywhere. But, there it is. Subaru fuel pump assembly. Now we're gonna take this old pump off and I got a brand new uh, Dodge Works 300 fuel pump, 340 liter per hour that I won on a Facebook contest and I'm about to put that bad boy in there. Brand new sock and everything. So next time we come back, there'll be a new pump on here and it's pretty straightforward to change. Just take that clamp off, hoses, new sock, good to go. Alright guys, just got back home. Had to go to Relay for Life just after I got the pump out, so I stuck it back in there. It's now dark out, as you can see. Using the light of my car. Got my little co-pilot over here giving me a hand. He got that at Relay for Life. Uh, so yeah, we had a good time there. We're going to get this bad boy out, get in the garage. This is still loose, so I just got to pull it out. We just got to take the studs out around the edge there get the light turned on here see if you guys can see I uh, won't let me no oh, keep that back wood but yeah once you get these studs around here they're 8 mil there's a couple of them around the edge there you just gotta kind of you know wiggle this around hey none of that. and then you know just kind of find the the path of least resistance Takes a little bit of twisting and turning here. But yeah, it's kind of dark, so I'm gonna bring this in the garage and we'll get back to it. Alright, so we're gonna get this thing tore apart here. First thing I'm gonna do is take this clamp off, which is really, really tight, so I'm probably gonna have to get a socket for that. Get on the last guy that put a fuel pump in this car. Loosen up these two hose clamps here. 
So we can get this off this fuel pressure regulator. They have inline in the tank. And looks to me as I'll have to wait until I get this clamp off before I can get the clip off here. Alrighty then. Here's our new fuel pump from DW or Deech Works. Probably saying that wrong, but you know. Uh, this is just saying our application listing for all Subarus pretty much for the connector kit that it comes with. Here we have our connector kit with some hose. It looks like a connector for the older cars, hose clamps. Being that that hose is in pretty good shape on there, I'm probably just going to use it. Here's the new strainer sock for the bottom of the pump. And here is the new Pride and Joy. The new DW300 fuel pump. Look at that beauty. About the same size, the other one a little bigger. I believe this old pump is a Walboro 255. So I'm going to get this stripped down and get that new pump all assembled and uh, be back when I'm putting it together. Alright guys, I'm back. I uh, just got a quick little tip. When you're putting your sock on the bottom of the fuel pump, there's a little locator stud there and it's kind of hard to focus. There you go. You can probably see that little ring. Looks like a little wavy ring around that black stud. You want to make sure you put that on there and that your new fuel pump comes with that. If not, this sock will fall off in the tank and then you're just going to be sucking whatever junk's in the bottom of your tank up into your fuel system and you definitely don't need that going on. Alright, we're back. Got the new DW300 pump installed. Strainer. I changed out the little rubber bushing that goes on the bottom here. This one's kind of getting weak. It's not the same one. So I put the one that came in the kit with it. Use the same hose. Just tighten these clamps back down. And the connector is straight plug and play for my year model. So from what the instructions said, this connector in this bag over here that comes with the kit is for the older model cars, like the old legacies and stuff like that. So I don't really need none of that. So I guess I'll just have some extra hose clamps and stuff. But uh, yeah, now we're going to go put this bad boy in the car. And uh, before you go putting stuff back in your car, like I sprayed this down brake clean and some carb clean just to kind of clean the dust off it. So when I'm putting it in there, I'm not knocking all that dust back into my tank. All right, go put this bad boy back together. All right, guys. It's going to be a little tricky doing it one-handed. We'll see if I can give it a shot. If not... We'll put the camera down here. Set that there. I should go pretty easy now. Kind of rotate it around. Hoses. Get a little tilt. Now, you got this bracket. Sorry about that angle, guys. Just bracket back here. You're just going to try to have to push that back to get the pump around it, like the pump assembly, because it goes on the top. Pretty impressive getting this in one hand right now. Oh, got the fuel line back here in the way. Presto. Get that lined up. The rubber. Try to get these hoses on. Turn this here. 
you guys can kind of see this hard line. It just kind of slides up on here. And then it's going to click on. Boom. Like that. Bring it back around. Get some power for this fuel pump. It's big old fingers. Here it is. Snap that in there. All right, now we're gonna put all these little baby screw or nuts back on all these little studs. We're tightening them down again. These are an eight millimeter. And you don't want to do too crazy when you're tightening these down because you pinch the gasket too much. It's usually when things start to leak just from my experience in the past so just you know snug them down but don't go crazy like if you had a quarter inch drive ratchet that's what I would use so you're not going too crazy on the torque alrighty then next be putting the seat back in all right guys we're back I just got all the uh, nuts for the fuel pump cover tightened down all these little guys in here you want to give the once over all your connections make sure the earrings tight this fuel line especially, they're real easy to like not get on there sometimes. Some people have a problem with them, but they're real pretty easy to get on there. You just gotta make sure that when you put it on there, you hear that click and that both the ears are engaged out so that this doesn't come off because that's your pressure line. You don't want that leaking. And then your little clamps right here, put those back on your pliers. Gonna line up your gasket. Cover back on something like so. Got my pile of screws over here. It's a little difficult being coordinated when you're using a camera to see everything that's going on. So get these screws in. And like I said, this can be done through the trunk. I've helped people in the past do this through the trunk. But being, you know, I like to eat. I'm a bigger guy. It's definitely easier to take the seat out and do it this way. It gives you a nice spot to sit and work on it while you're doing it. All right, I'm going to snug these down and we'll put the seat in. All right, guys. We're in the putting the back seat back in just got it set up in there it's not too bad it's kind of a pain in the butt trying to get the middle seat belt over by yourself but these seats are real light this is the top part of the back seat on the top they just kind of sit in the, these little hooks on the top and then the bottom I know I said earlier there was three when I was wrong there's four there's one two three and then the fourth one's right there so I want to get those in Gonna set my buckles up. I'm gonna clean this junk up. I haven't had this seat out before to really look at it, so I'm gonna try to clean this up the best I can. And then we're gonna prime the pump. We'll be back. All right, guys, on the back seat again. When you're putting it back in, there's this little hook right here, or I should say loop here, and hook right there. So when you go to put this back in, you might need someone to help you. You might not. It's really, really light. But you just want to make sure you get your buckles up for your seat belt. And this loop right here underneath this hook. Don't know if I'm going to be able to do it one handed. Give it a go for you guys on the old YouTube. I'm sorry for the crappy camera and all that crap. Shooting this on my iPhone. It's like my first time YouTubing, so. See if I can get it under there. Yep, it's hooked in. Heck yeah. Now we're gonna do is slap these two bolts in the front on each side in. Tighten them down my 12 mil. Now we're 
around the pump. All right, guys, we're back. Moment of truth. Uh, gonna give the pump a prime here. Just cycle the key a couple times. Some people probably tell you that you want to uh, get a tune when you go up in fuel pumps. Mine are really close, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to be getting tuned next weekend at Dirty Racing Products out in Green Coast Springs. So yeah, uh, one more time on this Prime here and we'll give her a go. Sounds good though. Pump does sound good. Alrighty then. Fired right up. Uh, yeah, check engine lights on because I got a new motor, TGV deletes and all that good stuff. Ain't been tuned out yet. Over next weekend. Got my access port over here. Everything looking good. She's sounding good. No miles on this little girl. 141,000 on this 04 WRX. Uh, popped the motor about a thousand miles ago. Or actually, I can tell you exactly how many miles ago. Let's just say down there. 1,880 miles ago. Popped the motor. Uh, from what you can tell, it leaned out and uh, ended up popping the crank bearings, started knocking, so got a new motor put in, JDM 205. Down at Dirty Racing Products, she's running like a dream now, as good as she can, no boost on this base map, but uh, yeah, she seems to like it. Uh, more to come have a video up after I get a dyno and all that good stuff uh, Mike Body's tuning it so look forward to showing you guys the video of it on the dyno uh, like comment subscribe if you want to I know it's my first YouTube video but I've really like got into cars and stuff but hopefully a lot more to come uh, expect everything all, everything you imagine all sorts of different type of cars uh, I really like helping out my buddies whenever people need help from simple stuff like brake jobs to anything more. All right, enough rambling. Thanks for watching if you lasted this long, and uh, see you next time. All right, I know I said I was going to be done on the last clip, but uh, bear with me here. I just want to show everyone the tools I used. Again, this is a Deechworks fuel pump. The part number is a 9-TAC, 301-TAC, 07 Nine one. Again, this is for my. Let's see if it'll focus out here. My 04 WRX. I'll do like a detailed walkthrough video of that someday in the near future. Uh, it's got a little bit of fun stuff done to it. And then back to the tools. There's the old fuel pump right there. The old bushing that sits on the bottom to keep it from vibrating around. And pretty much all I used was my 3 8 ratchet with an extension. Got a 12 mil socket, 8 mil socket. I got this little uh, close area ratchet here that makes things real nice. And I just threw a little Phillips tip on that. Pair of pliers, use that to get to the hose clamps. Little baby mechanics, flat blade screwdriver, another Phillips screwdriver, and a bigger flat blade I used to pry stuff around with. And then a lot of the stuff I get done. On my car it's just with this basic stanley ratchet set you know i mean it doesn't take much guys just go out there and get yourself something that's decent you know harbor freight tools are great for someone starting out not to be used every day but you know this is my little get along kit I throw this in the back of the car so if i gotta get stuff done it's got most of the things you'll need to get stuff done other than that guys like i said before appreciate you watching the video and uh, look forward to showing you guys more about my car, maybe other people's cars, getting into this YouTube scene. Appreciate it.